Good afternoon, everyone. Michael Bowman here. It's the 9th of uh, April, 2015. And I've done uh, a video on this in the past, but I just want to slow down a bit and do it again, present the material a little less rushed uh, for people as a kind of a tutorial guide. So um, <clears throat> as a software engineer, one of the things we always have to deal with is, is source code and the control of source code. Um, and things can get hairy when two or more people are actually working on the same code base. Um, you know, if, if one person goofs up something and the other person's going to experience the goof up, right? So uh, through proper source code control and through proper practice, we can minimize those disasters and those headaches so that people can code and uh, get the code checked in. The system can build the product in whatever configuration and way it needs to build the product. Um, and life goes on and everything works good. It's a well-tuned uh, engine. So to that end, let's, um, let's talk briefly about a, a good way to structure things in a traditional like Team Foundation server setup, right? So this is kind of going back to the subversion days, but it makes sense. So let's say you're in, you're in source control here. You've got a project. And then underneath it, what you want to do is you want to create a folder called main. Now main is, you can call it whatever you want, but we'll just call it main. You shove your, your product into main, okay? That's the, that's the tip of your solution. You might have 50 projects in there. You might have three. You know, it's your solution. That's the gold copy. This represents the gold copy of your product that is always build ready. That is always what, you know, if you're on version one, version 1 1.5, 1.7, that's the one that's being built, you know, that's, that's the pinnacle. That's where you want to build from. <clears throat> in fact, we have a little BR tag here. It's the build ready branch. This is also the one for continuous integration. Okay. Now the problem is if two or more people are, are pounding away on main and by what I, what I mean by that is if you're getting main and dragging it to your local workstation and you're adding files, you know, whenever you add a file to a project, the file gets added plus the project gets updated, the project file. Um, there could be solution changes, you know, to the solution file. Um, there could be configuration changes you make, reference changes you make to DLLs and whatnot. All of those things get caught up, you know, captured in either project files, solution files, NuGet packages, et cetera, et cetera. And um, the problem is if one developer makes changes and checks all that stuff back into main and the next developer gets latest, um, things can go bad if, uh, if the project is compromised. Now, with merging and whatnot, it's supposed to work pretty good, but I can tell you from recently, you know, I worked on a project where um, even if I had nothing on my hard drive and I went out to main and did a get latest on main, um, I would bring down what, it, what you know, people had worked on throughout the day fresh, nothing on my drive at all. Just drag the whole solution down. Uh, I'd open it up, it would open fine. I'd right click, choose compile, crash. You get a ton of compile bugs. Um, so why is that? Why do we get those compile bugs? It's because on one person's uh, system, either the way they're checking in is not, the, the way they're checking their stuff in, the check-in that they do is not bringing in the information about what they've got going on on their box so the build can be successfully replicated like it is on their box. In other words, they can build on their box and when they do the check-in, they're missing something. And, not all the material that's on the box that makes the build work is getting in, and, and so that breaks. Well, really, you don't want them to check in all that stuff. You just want their code, right? We just want code from developers. We don't want one developer checking in what he thinks is the best way to compile something versus another developer that thinks things should be done this way because you get a collision and it's a big headache. So how do you minimize that? Well, we do that with branches. Okay, and something called merging. And it's not, a, it's not too difficult of a concept to, to wrap your brain around, so let's give it a shot. So in this scenario, uh, what I would do is I would create a dev folder, and if I had three developers, right? As, as let's say we started off with one and two more come on a week later, two weeks later, right? So we have a total of three. What I would do is I would make a branch of get latest from main, make branch that into dev one, branch it into dev2, branch it into dev3. And then I would tell each developer, you know, your, de your developer one, you go get from here, and you drag that down to your machine, put it into your local workspace, and you go ahead and use that, beat it up, do whatever you need to do to make it work. 
all your changes get checked into there. Not there, but right there. Same thing for developer two and same thing for developer three. So that takes care of the first concern, which is allowing people to save their work, not lose their work, you know, be able to safeguard the work, see the versions they're working on. You can always, as a manager, run reports on this and see what kind of activity you're getting on a daily basis. You know, is, is Michael checking in stuff, you know, throughout the day or do I, do I only hear from him once a week type thing, right? Then the issue is how do you get all of this back into MAME? Now some people say, well, you know, the developer just checks it back into MAME, does it merge to MAME? Well, that's actually not a good idea because when you do that, you're picking up the differences and, and you know, if you let the tool do the merge, um, you run the risk of it thinking something's right when it shouldn't be. You know, it may, it may work, but it may not be something you desire, and, and you might end up with something up here you don't like, which won't build right. And we all know that if it doesn't build right, you know, the, the consequence of that is the rubber chicken on your, on your desk, and nobody wants that. So what we're supposed to do is this developer, D1 we'll call it, that's a workspace on my laptop. And I will go ahead and create another place for the main to land on my laptop, right? We'll just go like that. Now I've got two work, work spots on my laptop, right? And if I want to, I can create a third. And I can call it test merge. We'll just call it test dem. And what I can do is I can merge main and I can merge developer one into that. And then I can make sure it works. Now the beauty of this is Main will have picked up all of the changes from everybody else that have been, you know, finally merged up there. And then I can merge mine with that into here and test. And if it's good, then I can do two things. I can tell the, the build engineer, I'm ready to go. I've labeled my work. Please pick up this label and let's do the merge and I can let him do it. Or I can just go do a continuous integration check-in. And what'll happen there is, once I know that's good and I've tested it and I've run tests and it works, if I do merge back from D1 back to main, I don't want to merge things like the solution file and project files per se. You know, if I've added files, obviously that's going to have to go into the project file. But if I'm just editing code and whatnot, then I want those to be merged up here, back up here. When we actually do the build, the continuous integration build, what you need to keep, you know, keep in mind is, depending on what your plans are for your product, you may not want to just do a, a solution build. You might want to have it scripted because you might want to build for x86, you might want to build for 64-bit, you might want to build for this or that debug or release, you might have special configured, you might have 25 projects here. And depending on the build you want to do, certain things are going to go in, certain things are going to be left out. And that's governed by scripts that run against this. And you set that up with the continuous integration of like cruise control or the TFS build agents, things of this nature. So that's a little bit out of the topic of what I wanted to talk about. But essentially what I'm trying to say is by, by using branches in this manner, um, you safeguard main so that if a developer, let's say a developer has been working over the weekend you know, it's a holiday weekend, everyone's stressed out, they got to get something done, you know, by Tuesday, and uh, everyone's stressed out. If, if a developer's checking all his stuff into here and it keeps breaking, at least the other guy can keep working. Every, he doesn't have to get hammered by the problems of the other guy. And there will come a resolution when he tries to get his stuff into main. The problem is if everyone's just checking into main and things are broken, it kind of puts the brakes on for everybody. And then there's a bunch of reconciliation that has to happen. And if it's happening every time there's a check-in, you know, it's, it's just this pattern of it's broken, we gotta fix it, right? And that's why we wanna do continuous integration builds. It's like every time I check in um, and merge, I can get a build, right? So every time I check into here, I'm not necessarily gonna get a build. But every time I get the merge from there to there, I'm gonna get a build. And that's really what you wanna focus on. <clears> that's an extra layer of control. Now, a lot of people don't practice this, and I get that. Um, and all I can say is after 22 years of software engineering and lots of headaches with lots of clients over the years <clears throat> where they've done this model and it's been painful, 
and uh, very painful, um, I found that this works the best. And it just opens up possibilities, and I would recommend it to all of you that you consider using branches uh, for, for your developers and whatnot. Now for releases, the same thing applies. When you actually do a release, at the end of the day, uh, once the release is done, if it's a good release, you want to go ahead and label it, uh, and then you want to branch it. And by branching, I mean you're going to create a snapshot branch, we'll call it R1 under releases, and so now every file that went into that release, that build, we've got a copy of it here. And same thing for R2. And the difference from R1 to R2, maybe we've added new files, we've dropped some files, We've reorganized and refactored things, but each release has its own copy of the source code so that if something happens, you need to go do a hot fix, you can do it. The other cool thing you can do with branches, which we haven't talked about, is features. You can actually branch the project uh, down to a feature, whoops, down to a feature level. Grab another pen here. Uh, and so what happens there is you can, in, you can build individual features at a branch level and get all that stuff to merge back up to the main solution. So you have even more granular control. That's really sophisticated because that means you can add features um, and people can just work on compartmentalized features um, without having to do, you know, without having to get everything and go through entire full stack headaches. Um, it's a very good way to develop. Uh, so that not, th there's a component missing from here and that would be a feature branch underneath main where developers would literally be just getting a feature and building that out, checking that in, there'd be unit tests going on, test-driven development, and then once that's good, it would be merged back up into those branches, ultimately rolled up and ultimately triggered. And that's a, that's a great way to do just continuous integration every day, get the builds out every day, um, and add features on the fly, and have a beautiful development machine. So, uh, that's all. Anyway, I just wanted to go through that again. This is Michael, and uh, if you have any questions, you can always email me, mbowman at verticalworks.com, www.verticalworks.com, and you have a great day. Thanks for watching.